fundamentally, this is not a film about psychedelics. Right. In so many ways, it is completely. But actually, beyond that, it's not. It's a it's a film about consciousness, and it's a film. It, it came to me, I think, a week or two ago. I was thinking about the film, and I. This film, because I'm, you know, I'm very, very interested in psychology, psychotherapy, um, mental health, all of these, you know, this is, these are the realms in which I've always made films anyway. And um, so yeah, so a couple of weeks ago I came to the realisation, this, what this film is really about is it, it's a film about the painful process of making contact with yourself mm. in a world where we're not invited to spend very much time mm -mm. in contact with ourselves. And if we're not in contact with ourselves, we, we're not able to be, as Leary discovered, we're not able to be in real, any real contact with the people around us. And as we're discovering as a species right now, we're not able to be in contact with the wider world around us. And when you're not in contact with yourself, when you're not in contact with others, when you're not in contact with planet Earth, um, you know, not such good things happen. Mm -mm. You know, as we're facing, you know, the this big extinction event. You know, so many species are disappearing at this incredible rate, and global warming and everything else we're facing. For me. This isn't a film about navel gazing and looking inwards for the sake of kind of polishing ourselves, you know, in some sort of quest for self optimization or perfection. It's actually uh, this thing that, in order to change the world, we actually, one of the most effective things we can do is to have a good, serious, long, hard look inside at ourselves. Mm. And uh, however we choose to do that. I think what the film's saying is it seems that perhaps if used carefully and responsibly in the right context, psychedelics may be an aid to that process. And then to jump, and we'll get back to the other thing, but jump, I, I know in the, in, the, um, in the title, the edge of consciousness. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's another, thing, another word that stuck out to me. I, I'm not trying to get to each word, but it's like the edge of consciousness. You're not... You're not there, I, I don't think anyone is there at consciousness, you know, yet, in a sense of a large scale. But at the same time, like, these things can pro kind of propel you to, like, right up to the, you know, to the line. And then, again, it's up to you to, to really go over that line. But to get, to get you there, these compounds are something that are very important, and at least in my journey, has been very beneficial. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's something that you can speak of in your personal journey, but, I mean, how, how has that helped you and your kind of um, getting up to the edge of consciousness, but then also making this film? Mm. Yeah, I mean, what I can say on that front is that, um, you know, there are many, you know, what I've also become aware of, bef you know, before all the more so making this film, is that there are so many different ways of exploring one's consciousness and exploring the edges you know, because the edges are the uncomfortable places mm -hmm. where we face uncomfortable truths mm -hmm. that often we'd rather not see. And, um, you know, one option, for instance, uh, Holly Harmon, who I interviewed, she's a, breath, a holotropic breathwork facilitator, yep. which was actually, you know, developed by Stan Groff, who mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier. Um, and um, also, all the more so in the pro since the five years ago of starting making this film, um, it's become clearer and clearer to me that human beings have been finding ways to alter their consciousness for thousands of years. Oh, you yeah. know, that's very clear. And some of those have involved the ingestion of certain plant substances. Others have involved fasting, dancing, sweat lodges, you know, all, so all sorts of different means and ways of doing that. Um, and uh, yeah, I I would agree. I think you know what what this what the experts what these stories are telling us is that these again used carefully and responsibly may offer us a really valuable opportunity to yeah to look inwards and examine 
uh, the less comfortable edges of ourselves. Fantastic. And then going back to the interviewing the experts, you, you kind of asked like kind of one question that was really poignant. It's almost like the title, you know, it kind of just comes. What can expanded states of mind teach us about ourselves, the world, and our place in it? I know you just kind of spoke on a lot of that, but maybe speak more on not just the the inner battle, but then also, or not inner battle, I don't want to say that, but the inner changes. But if you, if we, if each individual person is changing themselves in a profound way, that really can have profound differences in, in how we live our lives in the world, but then also interacting with each other. That, uh, that I think is, is big. So like, how did you kind of formulate on to that? Because I, I know in your research, you just mentioned a bunch of things, sweat lodges, yoga, holotropic breath work. I mean, it's not just a psychedelics thing. You know, it's it's more of a consciousness thing, but then as well, it's it's not just an inner, it's also an outer and more of a holistic kind of idea. So how did you come up with that kind of, um, I guess you could say, not mantra, but question to yeah. ask? Yeah, yeah, that that came while I was writing it, writing the kind of pitch document. Yeah. You know, um, once the film was finished, it was how do you sum your how do you sum five years work up in a paragraph, right? And that question came, and it, it I think it was. I think it was something that I hoped everyone could relate to. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward, you know. What what can what can these substances teach us about um, about ourselves, the world, and our place in it? You know, and it seems pretty clear that the answer is again, yeah, used carefully and responsibly. I think quite a lot. Right, and then as well. Um, so we'll move on to not just the film, but like kind of in the outside world is. It seems like the science is backing you up on, on this. Um, Johns Hopkins just opened up a new a psychedelic research center of you know seventeen million dollars, like used specifically, um, you know PTSD, other health things, uh, bulimia, depression, and anorexia. Um, you know, kind of leading the way with that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you know, last night Anderson Cooper, you know, went on sixty Minutes and you know, kind of sh is trying to show how mushrooms or other you know, kind of plant-based medicines can, can change that. So it seems like, you know, now psychedelic research has never been more popular, at least in our lifetime. So, you know, what, what do you think of, was that, is that just, was that just inevitable, you know, over the, like, tell us how these, this has changed over the five years since I want to make this film, and then now we're here five years after. I mean, things have drastically changed, at least in that front. I think, I feel like we're riding a wave. I feel like mm. I've been riding a wave, and I feel like that wave picked me up. And, and took me with it, you know. And I'd mentioned my my inspirations, you know, one of them being um, Graham Hancock's TED Talk. You know, it's all part of that wave, and it was so nice to interview him. However many, like three or four years after, after he did that, um, and tell him that, you know, say, hey, yeah, you know, we're here today doing this because you did that, and so everything's a point along the way. And I think after these substances were so. Uh, vilified and banned and mm -hmm. demonized um, you know and, and that's a whole really very interesting discussion to be had around why that happened and how that happened and all the rest of it and how to blame characters like Timothy Leary were or weren't you know that's there's a lot of people who have a lot of strong opinions around that um, but Rick Doblin had a very interesting quote from, um, I believe it was Richard Nixon's chief of staff, or one of his senior, senior advisors. I think his name was Holderman. I mm. um, have to check that. He was quoted as saying, um, basically, if we can't go after these left-wing hippies, anti-war activists, for their ideas, they seem to love these drugs. We'll go after them for the drugs. Um, so and you know I think this whole wider discussion around the war on drugs and how as a society we uh, approach you know uh, I you know whether lumping what some people would call medicines these medicines in with these things we call drugs of abuse such as cocaine and heroin or whatever else whether that's even helpful is is a whole other discussion too but. Um, Where am I going with this? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm yeah, just talking about yeah. more like psychedelic research and like just f 
f the five years how it's changed. I mean, you yeah, said you were kind of you kind of you were kind of <laughs> riding the wave. That you're surfing the, the wave. That was the question. I went off on a few couple no, of tangents. No, but, but all those I think are very important to understand the entire context of that because that's exactly why I was so against. You know, it was so taboo in the South. Like you, you don't you don't take those things. Like that'll make you go crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then now it's like that was one of the most transformative things that I've ever done. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's a, people's, we well, just picking up on that last point, that's most people's biggest fear is, Dennis McKenna talks about that in the film, he says, that people say, I'll, I'm afraid I'll take something and I'll never be the same again. And then what he says is, that's the whole point. <laughs> you know, you will never be the same again. And it's a fine line. These, these, it's, to quote another person in the film, Rick Doblin says, psychedelics are like a knife. You know, they can be used by a surgeon to heal or a criminal to kill. They are not in and of themselves a magic um, panacea that's going to fix the world or fix anyone's problems. But they are this, uh, this microscope, this telescope, that used carefully and responsibly might help people see themselves. 